G'day punters, welcome to the mailbag previewing at Fat Fat Meeting at Caulfield, Blue Diamond Stakes Day. Uh, we're at headquarters. The rail's out what, Josh? Deepest thinker in racing. Welcome to the show, actually. Thank you for coming on. Good to be here. Scooty, again. my man. Headquarters, my house. This is actually a little den. This is sort of where a lot of the deep thinking is done, and so I thought, why not bring the deepest thinker I know, I know in how racing? Yeah. This bloke's got angles everywhere. You, you are an angle man. Yeah. This bloke's uh, deep thinking. For it. I think the uh, secret to deep thinking is how high these ceilings are. I reckon. There's a lot of room. Head and space. also, a lot of space. I think what I've picked up about deep thinkers is they can avoid conflict. Because as I was coming here to, to record what I think is one of Victoria's most important preview shows. I was attacked, assaulted, uh, aggressively taken on by a bloke really missing assaulted. teeth and logic. At the front of headquarters here, he wanted to go. Did you not, Josh? Yeah. And you yeah. would have had a good view, wouldn't you? Yeah. Because you backed up pretty quick. Yeah. I was like, well, there's, there's two of you. He goes, there's two of you. There's two of you. Says, I look around, says, it's not two of us. <laughs> it's just me, mate. He's gone. He's like, he's fucking It's day today, though, so there's. There's plenty out there, or what's the? It's, it's a free hit day. Scary, Thursday. scary shit yeah. around here. It's free. It was unbelievable, unbelievable. Anyway, we survived. We avoided conflict. I reckon he just actually come back from back in Britannicus had that with the tab down there. He's put his pension on Britannicus, maybe. Finally got paid. <laughs> That'd be the first collect. How'd that feel? Yeah, well, I nearly forgot to back it. I was picking up some mountain goat beer and uh, walked into Dad's place, and he said, "I oh, just in time to watch the race." I said, "Oh, what race?" Gaz doesn't miss a beat. Gaz does not miss a beat. No, he doesn't miss a beat. Well, he's not, he hasn't got much on, but uh, he was, yeah, anyway, so yeah, it was a good win, but uh, Gaz, great ride. Josh Cartwright just gave an absolute peep, so I know thank Gaz you, Team Wild and Cam Cook and all the guys down in Warnable. We love it. Could have used Gaz's concrete putter too with that bloke out the front. Would have knocked out his final tooth he had left, that free. <laughs> we over in one Anyway. Day. Today's show, it's a fat card at Caulfield's group races, uh, I think it's two through nine, or two through eight. We're going to touch on races five to nine and do them in depth, so we don't waste the time. The show will go for two hours if we deep dive into each and every race. So we're going to start with race five, and my best bet will come from race four. I think yours will too. Yep. So you get some bets outside of the main races. So we've got the group two, uh, Angus Armanasco Stakes. Race five, 1400 metres. 1400 metres, Philly's event. Three-year-olds. Love three-year-olds. Yeah. I thought the speed map would look a little bit like what you're going to see in the screen there and then following that you get the synthetic hold it's busy horses like South Bank, Snap Dancer and even Chassis could try and roll forward Lady Lapina I think will lead from 7 and then you've got Acting who didn't want to lead first up probably learned their lesson and rolled forward from 11 I think you can also you could also say well, 10 could be it went forward last start uh, Flemington Luna uh, Light can lead. Man, yeah, like there could be a lot of speed in this race. God knows what Chris Simons does on Mrs. Beckham from two. Could get really coppened in there. Could lead. Could lead, which would be a Could PR as well. Yeah. Could, there's a lot of could. A lot of coulds. Mm. Scooty? Yeah, I thought there was a couple of chances here, and I'm, yeah, a little bit uh, wary to come into acting at, um, at the short price of sort of $4. I thought uh, South Bank could be an improver and, and finish off. I didn't think the track sort of played to its advantage last time. Uh, I thought uh, if they go too slow, but you guys are saying no, I thought Lady Lapino gets a great run on speed. Miss Beckham, I'm surprised they stuck with, uh, with Chris Simons. Uh, this is a horse that could probably go places, and um, yeah, I'd be sort of opting for, for D Lane from the Elton Zara camp. Uh, and then score was the other runner that caught my attention, but I don't think I'm going to play until I see uh, a bit of pattern unfold, and um, which you will have by now. Yeah, they will be established, but I sort of had four chances outside um, acting who I'd take on and, and snap dance. I think you still owe me a box of piss from the bet that we had at, at snap, over snap dance a uh, few moons ago. But well, um, we'll let that slide. There's four in your house right now, so you can keep one or two of them. We're sweet. You're always sweet. Sweet. Yeah, we're sweet. sweet. Good. Joshy, Ben, thoughts? Uh, yeah, it can't be entertained by uh, that top end of the market, especially with acting South Bank. Could all roll forward. Acting deserves another chance. Still at the, the penalty weight from uh, set weights plus penalties still. Deep thinking weights, man. Uh, so we need it on the show. We need a bit of that on the show. It's got about, you know, it needs to sort of be a length better than, which it is, but with this map, uh, it's going to get, I've mapped it cast three wide, four wide. 
Um, South Bank, I'm still concerned about. Probably the one of the two I want to be on if I had to back either of them, but I don't want to be entertained. I think there's a lot of speed in the race. Score could run quite well. Um, it, it savaged the line uh, last start, and this goes up to 1,400 metres. Dwayne Dunn just needs to sort of settle it, you know, midfield, off pace sort of a thing, not right back as it did last start. Um, and also one that's on the quick backup is Luna Light. Uh, thought Jamie Carr sort of put it in, there's no such thing as a Flemington Coffin, but I thought it got a bit held up there Coffin-ish. last week. Um, had no luck, probably forgive run, could be anything, sort of untapped uh, from a stable who is pretty smart, Will Clark and um, trains. Yeah, so, I kind of agree with it, everything that's been said. I think Luna Light is a bet at $26, take some of that, get set there. The other horse that I think is the most likely winner who scored, drawn four, D done. It was just a barrier trial last night. It was no intent, savage line, perfect setup here, drawn four. If he just kicks up and, and he's in like sort of a 1-1, one, one, I'm going to launch again in play. If he's two back and one or three and one, whatever we want to call that, I'll, I'll go again. Yeah. I've ridden cold, I'll probably just pray to the gods, but... If he shows any intent, I think it'll be winning. If he shows no intent, I think it'll go very close. I think I think uh, Luna White's the other one. That's, this is the wrong price. Is extremely deep race. Next race, Scooty. Race six is the Group One Futurity Stakes over fourteen hundred metres. Uh, wait for age contest. Classic race. Big race. Yeah. Great race. Uh, There's a speed map on your screen, punters. And uh, by the simple hole. The early money seems to be. Uh, for my sort of pin-up horse, uh, Super Seth. I, I tipped him on the show last time. We'll, we'll sell the pat on the back. Yeah. I was about to trumpet you. <laughs> I was actually about to give you a little yeah. tickle on the back and you entertain yourself. Yeah, well. You were very firm, Super 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 Seth. Seth. Yeah, a bit of a tongue twister. <laughs> tongue twister. <laughs> Stacy Jones. I think, yeah, this is the race that they've set him up for. So I think the win the other, the other day was a bonus. There was a bit of talk before the race uh, that he wasn't going to handle the wet track, but to my eye, he looked, he looked like he you know, really enjoyed it. I think sometimes stables say that just to protect, I guess, the stallion's sort of worth. I think Melody Bell's not on a grand final. Um, again, Colding will be, will be another one set for the All-Star Mile. Uh, and then outside of that, Streets of Avalon sort of likes the track and trip, but this is too far a, um, a step for it. So I think Super Seth sets up beautifully here. And, He'll just show his dominance as a, a proper Caulfield horse and a and a class stallion or cult or whatever you call it. JK said, when you're done tweeting. <laughs> no, I was just uh, checking. I know that uh, Super Seth also did, I think, get a spot in the All Star Mile, so it could have a different intention you're there. Yeah, uh, yeah. He'll, he'll be. Yeah, I think he was yeah. up in the voting. Yeah, I'll, I'll vote for Catalyst. Nice. Yeah, it's it's snuck tenth. It's got tenth. Uh, Came tenth in the voting, super success, so it's got a spot. Um, but yeah, tricky with the intent here, for sure. I'm just, I'm probably against Melody Bell, even though uh, we've still got memories of it in the spring in the oh, Kentar. Just like, just like an absolute beast, wasn't it? Yeah. Like and you're, really... you're, you're screaming. You remember what you're screaming in stands? You're screaming Tiaka Shark, Tiaka Shark, saying me to hit it, and I was like, it's not in the race, mate. But luckily, <laughs> I'm switched on and can sort of cover. A little bit of in-play, in-play there for the punters that aren't just to trying to get out of that heavily damaged yeah, book at that point. Absolutely. It was, <laughs> it was bolting. It was swimming. It was like hacking, yeah, it hacking loved it. thought, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, Ooh, pick it. Pick it and thought. Here, this race, I don't know, I'm, I'm probably entertained by potentially Streets of Avalon. Likes to bowl around. Had a huge peak. Leads tracking, it easy. Pra- what takes it on here? Oh, I thought Wild Planet if they're smart, they should go forward on it. Glad Rappel cross from seven, do whatever he likes. Yeah, yeah, it's got a lot of speed, don't get me wrong. But I thought with Wild Planet drawn one, I think it had drawn one previously and it went right forward. I think it led. Uh, could have been on uh, at the Scone Guinness. Uh, looks like it. Thanks to pointyform.com.au. Actually, um, so yeah, but Streets of Avalon probably an each way bet for me. Um, but if I didn't tame one of the three in the market, it'd be definitely Super Seth with the fitness edge. Colding came back pretty well first up, but I'll stick with the Victorian. I think Colding SB like four bucks against Elise, who would be a dollar eighty here. That's the right form launch traditionally for this race. I think it'll beat Super Seth, Super Seth, and Melody Bell. 
I think the two the the wrong price a wild planet who savaged the line in a good race first up drawn one is a chink here Streets of Avalon's the wrong price and is a bet each way I reckon this is going to run a really good race backs up it was huge last start week. The horse had beat it swooped, so the rail was starting to go by that point at Flemington last week. There was a lot of merit in the run. It gets a positive jockey switch. It's got a figure that competes here. And if they walk and he gets it at once, and it's on pace, which is more likely than not at Caulfield, it's the wrong price. There's a lot of horses here that aren't set for this race. Mm. For me, for me, what jumped out the way I do form was the track and distance was exactly... Uh, the same as last prep and it's peaked off a seven day backup. Last prep. Last prep. At, at, at track and distance. Yeah, yeah. So we backed it. It's been set up for this. It was the movers bet last one. Um, in that race, did SP four to one. Uh, and a different grade. But I don't think it's as brilliant as like Melody Bell, Super no. Seth or Colding, but it's a horse that's like the wrong price. box ticking here. Yeah. I think it might SP a little bit shorter at least. I, don't I think, think Colding though. Think drifting out to Colding brings the right form. Yep. The expressways yeah, the expressway is If you go to the puntingform.com.au or the betfair.com.au hub and you look at the race speed pr- or the feature race reports, mm-hmm. it's all expressway, expressway. Mm. Elise last year out of expressway. A lot of place getters out of the expressway. That's that's Coldy. Next race, Scooty. Okay, race seven is the Blue Diamond Stakes, the two year old group one, uh, over twelve hundred metres. It's uh it's, it's come up very short hands the attic. Uh, he was very good uh, last start, but uh, Barry one's a big, big worry for me. Uh, rulership, I thought, was really gallant defeat, and just knowing the Snowden stable, I'd, um, I'd, uh, I'd like to think that they've kept something in this horse, and the amount of times that they'll have a quiet run before their, or, or sort of blowout in fitness before their grand final. Uh, the Snowden Yard's absolutely magnificent at getting a horse to peak on the day, so I'd expect he improves. He's up on speed and he'll take a lot of beating. And I was backing. I was listening, I was listening to RSN the Monday from the, the the previous race, and he'd love to see it ridden with a sit. They're not scared of shit, are you? A little bit, yeah. What was what was the terms of the sit? Was that like cover? Yeah. If this well, horse, if this like horse from seven month. led. I think it's almost immoral. Mm. But I don't think it will. be interesting to see what happens, but the best thing is the favourite sort of penned away, which I like. I, th- I thought um, Montessori, if it can get cover, could be a danger. And then maybe the forgotten horse uh, is personal, Craig Williams. I thought it was a really good run last start, and if there's a knockout, maybe it's it. But they were the three I'd, I'd like to entertain. Joshua. Deep thinker. Uh, yeah, interesting point to touch on personal. I feel like it's pretty untapped. Um, we've only seen seen that win at that win at Flemington. Um, it was pretty. I thought it was impressive, but the times sort of say not so much. Um, I'm not really entertained to have much of a bet here. I want to be. Don't force it. If if something was to pray at Sandy, because I, I value your your yard. Thank you, Josh. Yard expertise. Uh, Don't I'd forget. That's why I'm not on the couch because it's a bit of a love show over there. <laughs> <laughs> well, Peter should be here as well. But yeah, I, I, with the favourite drawn one, I think you have to bet around it. But I, I wouldn't be surprised if they put this into like maybe like one back defence or two back defence. It's not going to get all the way back, is it? Um, I think well, let's let's no, begin. No, no, no. Let's talk about that. The Colts have gone sold in the Phillies both times. Yeah. This is going to go faster than even the Phillies, yeah. Yeah. So it's more likely than not he's going to be three pair back defence. Yeah, it's a good angle to look at it. He's cast. Yeah. He's going to need an extreme amount of luck up the fence, which is where you don't see anything win the Blue Diamond, or he's going to need a snick and circle. So you're saying you want to be probably off the fence? I'm saying if you drew 10, I think he's like a $2 chance. Yeah. If you're drawing one, I think he's like a $3 chance, $4 chance. Yeah. I think, I think it's really unlikely that he's going to get a favourable run here. I think it's really, really layable. Mm. Yeah. Very sure, like I'd be just very surprised. purely from the from the draw. I'd just be very surprised if it doesn't get easier than two seventy in the day. Best odds right now is two seventy in. I think it'll go right out the gate. Yeah, I can see sort of three fifty at least. I can see three fifty three four bucks. I can see four dollars probably. Yep. Yep. I think I'll come depending on what the pattern. Yeah, what yeah, the pattern on the day is as well. Is it my turn? Yeah. Uh, yeah. 
<laughs> I think they'll come for a beautiful night who was ridden outside of its winning pattern last start. Now gets Linda Meach on a leader. That's just a big turn on. You get huge odds. Don't lose on it. The Bustard and Young Horses unders at SP 50s. was three wide, no cover, but it's still SP huge. Got to risk it. Rulership. If you knew they were going to lead, I'd want to be with it heavily, but I don't, I'm not convinced. So I'm just going to sort of sit on the fence, see how it parades. I'm going to lay the favourite, Hansi Attic, because of the barrier draw. I'm going to launch that number 12, Montesira, who gets Ollie for the Mars stable, which they don't often do, and they should do more often, because they've got all the good horses, and he's the best rider. Drawn 13, he just get three wide, with cover. This is where that, this is the line they want to be in at Caulfield. This is what... This horse, SP, almost favourite in the Phillies, which went faster than the Colts. You're getting $10 each way all day. Bet, 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 bet. Montesiro is an outstanding bet here. It's going to get its chance to prove itself here. There's every, it's more likely than not that Hans Haddock won't get every chance. Don't lose Beautiful Night. What do you do with rulership? Don't know. Montesiro is the other one. Bet, bet, bet. So I think yeah, very, very keen. yeah everyone's sort of yeah, keen to lay the good old favourite. We'll jump onto the Oakley Plate race eight. Well, how long have we got? Eleven hundred metres. Well after your little um, story there, we haven't got much time <laughs> left. Uh, group one, uh, handicap, this is a cracker. It's always a great race. Um, I think the favourite can win here. Uh, Bivouac, that three year old form. Uh, we we saw uh, that work in the CFL states. God bless it. This horse uh, you know, it was dominant and uh, it's it's got gear so it's, it can it's a very versatile horse, it can win off slow or fast tempo, so it doesn't really matter. Um, I thought the I thought Anahid was well found at five fifty. No knock, she was impressive last start. Not sure about where she gets to from fifteen, may have to um, work a bit, but sometimes in this like eleven hundred metres you can sort of sit three wide and, and win. Four wide. Yeah, or four wide and sometimes um, by race that, that that might be the place to be. So not sure, but um, still, I think she's well found. Uh, I thought Pippi could win. I I like Trope as a horse or Troop, or however you say it. I reckon um, Trope. Trope. Yeah, Dwayne Dwayne Dunn sometimes bobs up on this day. Uh, he he su sort of suits this style of horse. I think thirteen dollars is an okay price. Uh, and the one at odds that I thought could surprise with um, with John McNeil, TV's boy. Uh, it's uh, twenty-five. Group one dry. Group one dry. Yeah, he's improved out of sight. This bloke, uh, twenty-five to one. Bonds away looks looks over the odds for me. So, I'd be with uh, three bivouac, seven trope, and five bonds away is the best value runners. Uh, yeah, I think Anna Heed's got a lot of scope and it's well in the weights. Uh, and I'll just sort of roll on. Might have to sit one. I, I don't know how you've got it mapped. I've got to sit in three wide. Yeah. And so, win. Yeah, it's tricky. It's a tricky one because it's probably going to have to take a seat with all the muscle, things like all the muscle, pippy, on the wall. It's got a bit of speed. But Barton, no, but I think Barton no, could be coffined. Um, Bivouac is completely, for me, I think under the odds. I can't get it that close to what it is in the market at the moment. I wouldn't be surprised if it comes out closer to Anaheed at, at the time of the jump. Uh, I know it's a proven horse. Um, With a massive figure and a dominant explosion. But saying that, this track and trip first up, last prep. But it's just how big this race is. Yeah. You can't get a horse that short. I don't want to weight the, the factor too much over such a short distance, but it is it is 55 and a half, whereas some of the other three-year-olds like um, the, and he, and he uh, are carrying much less. 52, is it? 51. Yeah, 51. Oh. When you need it is, I don't know if people were watching on uh, racing.com the other day with Mark Roden and uh, Dan Kelly. And TV, the great man. And TV. Uh, the greatest man. And Mark Roden, which I sort of take into account, is the... You're a big Roden weight, man. The, the weight drop is like... Bivouac, Both Richmond supporters. Bivouac might not be able to do those finish fees with with that that weight on its back. Yeah. So possibly the, the weight drop might... Um, Marks might help things, so things like you know down the weight. So for me, I'm looking at things like uh, Bold Star. I think all two Royals can't. You have to give it two excuses, um, but it has good figures. Trope, 
is one that's always there. Um, now going against the weight thing, but Bonds away ran a great race last year. It was travelling on the bridle to about the 200. I don't know how it's in. It's it's half and only though. Remember we backed it at, at Mooney Valley? Yeah. It hit the front. But it hit the front. Got, I think, I think how many was, horses, stop, how many horses do we know have hit the front at Mooney Valley and not won? Yeah. Like it's, it's, yeah. it's in rare air. Yeah, it's rare air. Yeah. You've got to be a certain like level of non-winning horse to hit the front of the valley and stop. Yeah, I think it's a bit... Yeah, like, it's that horse that puts those times on the board. You go, oh yeah. Game out to fifty to one. You'd be yeah, saying, yeah, okay, fair. Bonds great, away, great point. Great point. Price pending. Yeah, price pending. Price pending. Yeah, price price pending. pending. Um, it's got a monster figure at Caulfield. Big over figure. Over. It's a big horse, but it just doesn't seem. Mm. With these sort of like, there might be a fan across unless something gaps them, or unless people like gas gaps them, for example. But something like I, I remember horses like Swiss Ace or something just pokes its head through in a big fan in finish. Yeah. And then, oh, like, boom. And just it's just gets every, like, stuck run and complete, oh, complete yeah. split. So, like, but that's... I'd that's be, the squib lot. Was last year. I'd, I'd, I'd be... I'd be, that. I'd, be, I'd, be last year. I'd be seriously shocked if this isn't the fastest to, to the 600 all day at Caulfield. Well, yeah, it's this the same. Is a, like, this oh, is the... Oh, this like is just, just like, no, no, obviously, it's the strongest race, but there's so much speed here. Yeah. So much speed. A ball, if ball muscles in a in an eight round race, it'll it'll lead its own. So 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 is Pippi, like, so, so is Ron Immortal, yeah. free of debt. Fat Noel will want to lead. Mystico wants to lead. Fine Dane's got speed. Like, and that's not even to mention something else jumping out that wants mm-hmm. to go forward. Yep. I think this race is pretty simple. People like ticks every box, but just you can't get that short because of how deep this race is. Yep. And the heat is a good bet at, at five dollars, even four fifty, four dollars. From 15, it's perfect draw to cross at its own leisure, make its own luck. It's got no weight. It's a three-year-old. It's a proper horse. Loves Caulfield. Tick, 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 tick. Bet, 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 bet. Tippy will go great with Lindron. Perfect, perfect booking. Fat and half fresh. Ticks boxes. Ball of muscle. Don't like some of the gear changes, but I think all two Royal and Bold Star are the two from the back. Along with Bonds Away, maybe Hummer Hummer, who was savage the line. How awesome though beat Bold Star down the straight at Flemington. So you can you can just grey yourself right up here. I um, want to be with Anna Heed. I'm scared shitless of all two Royal and Bold Star. They're, they're three I'm interested in this betting opportunities in this race. Mm. Yeah. I don't think the race is as deep as everyone thinks, but um <coughs> yeah. well, there's, a few, there's a few things you can sort of say they're not up to this quality. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I thought there's a couple Yeah, they just don't like I pick up the paper on Sunday and I just don't read oh yeah, group one. Have a whole hovel or something like that. I just don't think that happens yeah. in life. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> there's no <laughs> angle, but I just don't, just can't feel it. Like, yeah, I just I can't wobbling. see that happening. No. Um, Caulfield race nine, the PD Young Stakes, uh, group two, wait for age, 1800 metre race. I thought uh, this is a pretty straightforward race. I think everyone will find uh, Kings will Dream. Kings will Dream. It's it in the, in the yeah. center four. It was grouse. It's drawn one here, yeah. it's going to be back and buried. Yeah. It was written within 10 so, minutes, so 1800 is different when you're back in Mary because you've got time, especially if you've got a smart jockey like Zara on who will probably get it out in time and he'll, he's ridden this track several times. Yeah. <laughs> he'll he'll yeah. have been drawn one at least once in his life and realised that if he's on a midfield or worse, you've got to get it out on the bend and get it going. So mm. you're not gonna, I don't think it's going to get that bad of a run as to what you get in like a 1200 metre race when you're, you're drawn one. And I, think, I think the race is absolutely shit. Mm, I think Constantinople. I've got no interest in it, but Scooty's found one here. That yeah. is, he's keen, and that's why we're talking about it. Yeah, I've, I've always thought, just watching uh, Constantinople, that I, I didn't really want to be on him in the Melbourne Cup. I thought he you know, would over race and cost himself the race. I think he's better suited at 1800 metre, 2000 metre tempo, uh, and he's the way I want to go. I can't believe he's. Nine or ten dollars, I think that's a great spoil. First up, uh, the Hay Stable love to set one up, and uh, this this is the horse for me. It was all the rage uh, after its Caulfield Cup run. Big uh, rage, big big. Like, uh, real lead in pencil, baby. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was, it was, it was like, <laughs> Constantinople, this Constantinople, that. That was severely. That was just a lot of lead in pencils. Yeah, after yeah, oh well, it did. It SP, no, favorite. SP favorite in the Melbourne Cup. Cup. So and you would look at the SP Pro. And Hamridge. So you're getting you're getting nine dollars, and this is not a Melbourne Cup class for you. No, it? I'm not bagging it. You're the angle finder. I respect yeah. it when you find something that's on the market. Well, deep inside the skull of Hayes Canby, which I love. 
Yeah. And we're getting odds. And Bossy's on. Oh, Bossy's on too. So yeah, on yeah, on too. Bossy on, that's possible. I love that. Smoke yeah. in the pipe, like Bossy. That. We'll rig a power across it and you just sort of smoke behind it, the pipe. Could be up moral. Ooh, skinny pipe. Anything from you, Josh? I'll be done. Uh, I done. Actually, no, no, no. I actually thought the way that uh, Harlan hit the line last start oh, was amazing. Oh. That was absolutely bold. I think mean, he said it to, uh, to you in the run or maybe... Uh, BZ in the run or something, something like that and said shit that is bolting that Thank was you, absolutely Campbell. bolting in the run and it just uh, never got clean air Zara off Ollie on yeah just switch there Ollie <laughs> and then uh, but the only problem is grand final day is to defend its uh, <laughs> to defend its Oz Cup what campaign. about Suzuka Devious uh, actually <laughs> oh, so I, funny, I, funny story about Suzuka I, I've backed it a few times at big odds I was I was I was looking around the uh, what's the area where they're sort of before they parade at Flemington, and I'd gone out. The pre-parade. Yeah, the pre-parade. <laughs> <laughs> you mean the pre-parade, yeah, mate? The pre-parade. Yeah. Not a fucking walk you can see with your bono from up on the top, the fourth <laughs> level of the fucking P and O ship that you you should base yourself out of as you yeah. as you assess the talent in the parade ring and also on the circuit up and there. I walked, the P&O. Christian. I walked in there and it was in the in the McKinnon. And I'm sit, standing there, and Magic Wand is standing there upright, calm as a phone. And then Suzuka Devious, <laughs> I could not write this any better. He's fucking vomiting its guts up. Just <laughs> vomiting straight up. I don't know if it's got the corona or. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's just hanging around with a pistol. He was hanging around with a pistol. It might have been, it might have, it might have been over the WA on the Was way. this before the old cup? Yeah, and it was just. No, no, before the McKinnon. It was just spewing. It was just... <laughs> ah! How's this part of... We bet together the first time I heard of it. <laughs> an absolute <laughs> gap job. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it's, it's, Seriously. Horses don't spew before their race, mate. Yeah, and I'm on it at hundreds in the same fucking race. Oh, for <laughs> fuck's sake. It's a cool first time I'm hearing of this. Unbelievable. Oh, right, right. Okay, so... Best a bit of adding there from the pistol, but the point is, Josh is going to be sent down to the yard. <laughs> we're going to be sent down to the yard on Saturday race nine. We're going to be tired. We're going to be exhausted. Hopefully, we're in front. Either way, Josh is going down. And he's going to be watching all eyes on just a little, just a periscope, just on Suzuka Devia. See if he's spewing or not spewing. Because if he's not spewing, he might be sweet. We're going to be with. We can't be losing if he's not spewing because he was spewing for the McKinnon. And we didn't know this sort of stuff. Anyway, that's that's race nine. Scooty's found one. He's keen on it. Almost double figure odds. Best bet and value bet and the lay, please, Joshua. Uh, best bet for me is my pendant race four. Value bet, Harlem in the last. And lay bet for me is pandemic race three. Yeah. <clears throat> but, uh, my best bet will be Super Seth. I stick with him. Uh, I think the best lay will be acting in race five, and my best value is definitely Constantinople in the last. My best bet, punters, race four, number one, Spanish Reef. I think it was this absolute barrier trial first up, Savage Alon, Charlie Sheen style. It's ready to win, drawn two, can do whatever it wants. Value, race seven, number 12, Montesiro, gets Ollie, nice wide draw, he can do whatever he needs to do from that draw. Love the setup, love the SP profile, I think it's huge odds. Laying hands the attic in the same race, drawing one. I think it's going to need every single bit of luck it's ever, a horse could ever get just to even be in the race. Mm, I think Dico's right. I'd love to, if I can have two lays, I'd even my next best. Anyway, I hope it's a fat weekend for you all. Goodbye, Goodbye. and enjoy yourselves. See you, Eddie.